Hey, welcome back. Today we're doing another part of our series on the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I hope you've enjoyed this series. Uh, we have this one and probably one more that we'll be doing on it. Uh, I would like to begin in the future, shortly after this series, starting another study series sort of similar to this. One thing we would like to do is start one on just who is Jesus Christ. And then I'd also, also like to do a series on, as I've been having some questions on it and people have asked, and I would like to just do a little in-depth, further in-depth look at baptism, and that'll be a little series on that. These are just little side series that we take, and maybe once a week we'll add a video to it. And as I said, right now we're doing it on the baptism of the Holy Ghost, and we've got that in a, a certain playlist. So if you've not seen our first I guess it's four episodes. Feel free to go back and watch because I think you will enjoy. Today, we're going to be talking about the importance, or actually, I guess you should say, what does the Holy Ghost do for you? Why do you need the Holy Ghost? Why would you want the Holy Ghost? Any of those three questions or questions similar, I think will be covered in this video. As we've talked before, and we started in the first video and talked about where Joel prophesied that God in the last days would pour out his spirit upon all flesh. Then we went ahead um, several hundred years to the book of Acts when that fulfillment came true in the upper room on the day of Pentecost and how that the Holy Ghost has been poured out uh, and been given out regularly since then. Now, there was a lapse of time where um, it seemed like people sort of got away from the preaching, got away from the teaching. And if you'll notice some of the great moves in the Word of God um, or the Kingdom of God, some of the great moves in our world um, really had to do with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. When you look at the Azusa Street Revival, when you look at um, the Welsh Revival, and some of these revivals, and we've touched on those as well. But you look at some of these people, and you look at, you know, for example, the Welsh Revival was by Evan Roberts. Uh, he was, I guess you could call it, one of the main people in that revival that he led. There was one common denominator in all of these people, and in all of these great outpourings of the Spirit of God. All these people, they were followers of Christ, but they desired a deeper walk with God. They desired everything that God had for them. And we touched in a previous video in which I said, some people want to debate, do I have to have it? Do, is it essential? And I said, to me, the question isn't you shouldn't even be asking that question. The question or the statement you should be making is, wow, I can receive it. And as I said, if you'll go back and watch, some of the things might leave little spaces in this video. But if you'll go back and watch those other four videos, I think you'll see where we're coming from. And it will all work its way up to this video. But today, and, and that's one of the goals I've had in this series is if you're watching this, and maybe you're a, you know, I'm, I'm hoping and praying that you're a born-again believer, and I'm sure a lot of you are. But if you've never received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, my desire is that it will, this video will get you in a hunger to, hey, I want that. I want what they got. I want what the Bible is talking about. Because, you know, a lot of people, if you don't have it, you know what you're going to be saying is, you know, uh, I need it because there's a real world out there. And just like we talked in our last video, you know, uh, you, and as I said, you might be born again. But I used the illustration in the last video. You know, a person might have on a warm shirt. And maybe you've got on another um, sweatshirt or a flannel shirt over top of it. And maybe you're warm, you know. And you go outside and it's a cold day outside. And you think, you know, this is okay. I can get by in it. Well, maybe you can. But then later in the day, that temperature is going to drop. And the winds are going to start getting colder. Do you know what you're going to need? You're going to need your jacket. You're going to need your jacket. So you're going to go back in and get your jacket and 
put it on, or else at least take it with you. Well, when it comes to life, you know, you might be born again, and that's wonderful. But you want everything that God has got for you. You might think, well, I'm getting along fine in your shirt or your flannel shirt. And you might be. But there's going to be times when that temperature drops. And I'm talking spiritually now. When things go on around you, when things happen, and you're going to need that little extra. And that's where you want everything that God has for you. I want to share a couple of scriptures with you today, and these are verses that gives you an idea of what the Holy Ghost will do for you. Now, in the beginning, as we get started, and I want you to understand, and I've covered this in one of those videos, so please go back and watch. As I said, the Holy Ghost is another manifestation of the Spirit of God. See, Jesus Christ he said that he had to go away because he said if he didn't go away, the Comforter could not come. But he said once he went away, then the Comforter would come. And as he told the disciples that day, he said, he said uh, they would receive another spirit. But then he said, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. So what he was saying was, he wasn't saying you're going to receive another spirit, somebody other than him. Jesus was saying, you're going to receive another spirit. You're going to receive something that you've not received before because he said, I will return in a spirit form and take up my abode within you. See, that's the difference today in the Old Testament and the New Testament. In the Old Testament, God walked with the people. But in the New Testament... In God's church, Jesus Christ walks in the people. He will come and he will dwell inside of you and take up his abode in you. And when he does that by the Holy Ghost, the baptism of the Holy Ghost, see, John the Baptist said, there's one coming mightier than I. And he said, he's going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire, power. So the Holy Ghost, you say, well, do I need it? Don't you want power? Don't you want that extra power of God that God has for you? Now, now here, I'm going to read to you a couple examples. And I want you to notice these verses. First off, let's look at Luke chapter number 24 and verse number 49. Jesus had told the disciples, he said, you go and tarry at Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. Do you see that? From power, with power from on high. He didn't say power given by man or power that you'll find under the table somewhere or in a closet. He said this power is going to come from above. It wasn't our power. It's not man's power. It's the power of God to change an individual. Now, God will change you when, when you come to him and you fully repent of your sins. Say, God, I'm sorry. You don't have to name every sin you've ever did. God, you don't have to do that. But when you come to Christ wanting forgiveness and say, Lord, I am sorry for, for living apart from you all this time. And Lord, I want you in my life. I want you to forgive me for every sin, Lord. And I want to I want to start a new life with you. The Lord will help you. And he'll turn you around. Okay, but then, that's when you need the power. Okay, now notice this. Now these were disciples. Don't, don't forget that. These were not sinners. These were disciples. They were already preaching the word of God. They was helping Jesus Christ. They was following after Jesus Christ. They was being taught by Jesus Christ. But he said, before you go out into this world, you're going to need the power from on high. And then in Acts chapter number 1 and verse number 8, this is another verse we quote quite often on here. But you will receive, you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. 
and you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all of Judea and in Samaria and to the uttermost part of the earth. It wasn't just to Jerusalem. He said Judea, Samaria, all the surrounding areas and unto the uttermost. Everywhere, the, the, the farthest point in the earth you can find, you're going to be witnesses to me. Okay, now we're going to share with you two verses of a, uh, two instances, and these are examples. Now I want you to notice these. The first one is Peter, the Apostle Peter. Luke chapter number 22. We see where Jesus Christ, they came to get the Lord and take him away before the crucifixion. And the Bible said that Peter, and we've heard the story, we've heard the story taught all our life. But think about this today. Think about it just a little bit differently with me. We've heard about it being taught, and we've heard it from a kid up. But listen, Peter denied the Lord. They even said, don't you know that man? And the Bible said he even cursed. He said, I do not know the man. What, what, was, the, what was the deal with this? It was fear. He was afraid. Uh, he was tore up. He didn't know what to do. He didn't know which way to go. All he knew was, I don't know nothing about that. I don't know him. No, I don't know him. Don't you know him? Nope, I don't. I don't. I haven't, I haven't ever seen the guy. We have seen you with him before. I do not know him. And the Bible said he even cursed. All right. The Bible said on Acts chapter number two that when the Holy Ghost fell in that upper room, Guess who one of those roughly 120 people were? The Apostle Peter. Now, he was done a follower of Christ. Remember, he'd started following Christ uh, years before when the Lord said, put down your net and follow me. Okay, he was done following the Lord. But he didn't have that inner power. He didn't have that inner spirit. But then on the day of Pentecost, he was there. And see, Jesus had told him, you go and wait till you receive the power from above. The Holy Ghost fell and filled that room. And when, the, when it fell at that room, the Bible said they all began to receive the baptism of the Spirit of the Holy Ghost. Peter was included. So then in... in as I said, we've had videos on this, so you can check them out too. But just sort of briefly, the, the Spirit began to move over the crowd. And the Spirit began to move over that upper room. And it began to pour out into the streets. And as it did, people began to gather. And they said, they said, what meaneth this? What meaneth this? They saw, they saw these people being baptized in the Spirit of God. What meaneth this? See, they had seen them go in the upper room. They had seen them in the upper room. So what got the attraction? What got the, the place to where they wanted to know what's going on? It was when they seen these people being baptized with the Spirit of God. And they said, what meaneth this? The Bible said, now here was this man that had just a few short time periods before, weeks before, Days before, this man that denied the Lord to the point where he even cursed out loud. Now, all of a sudden, he's been baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire. And when they asked, they said, what meaneth this? What's going on here? The Bible said, and the Bible said there was thousands of them out there. Or, or we read on the day of, that the day of Pentecost, that was what these multitudes were attracted. The number was uh, astronomical numbers that thousands of people had gathered there. Okay. So it, it was a big congregation. It wasn't a little group. But you know what the Bible said? The Bible said Peter stood up and he began to preach. He said, just paraphrasing. He said, all you out there, you're going to hear your first sermon. And let me tell you about what you're seeing today. And he began to tell them about Jesus. 
He preached Jesus, the same one, the same one that he had denied, the same one that he had been fearful of associating himself with. Now he was proudly preaching before thousands of people. 30, 40, 50,000 people gathered. 100,000 people gathered out there. And Peter was preaching to those people. Jesus Christ and him crucified, even to the point where he said, you have taken him and by your wicked hands. That's what the power of the Spirit does. It, it emboldens you. Okay, now notice this other one, and we're going to read another one here. The Bible said in Matthew chapter number 26 and verse number 56, this is where they're coming to take Jesus away. Okay, and uh, they're coming to, to get him in the garden. Matthew 26 and 56, it said, Then all the disciples, now are you looking at that right there? All the disciples. If you're, if you're watching this, say that with me. All, all, all the disciples forsook him and fled. Now this was before they was baptized with the Holy Ghost. They all forsook him and fled. But in Acts chapter number 2, they was all filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And the Bible said when Peter stood up and began to preach, any of those other 11 were there. They could have preached with Peter. But obviously, if you're going to preach to a, to a congregation or a crowd, you only need one speaker. You can't have three or four people up preaching. It can, it's confusing. So Peter was the one that stood up and began to preach. But the Bible said Peter stood up with the eleven. So all those were standing up, backing Peter, saying, Peter, we're right there with you. You go ahead this one. We'll get the next one. Okay. So do you see what happened now? Now let's let's review this real quick, and, and I want to give you a little 30-second review. All right. Luke chapter number 22, Peter denies the Lord before the day of Pentecost happened. He, he denies the Lord. I don't even know him. Acts 2, chapter 2 happens, and the Bible said Peter gets up and begins to preach now that he's had the baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire. Matthew chapter 26, verse number 6, the disciples, when they're coming to take Jesus away, the disciples all run and hide. Fear. All of that, all of that, um, you know, being afraid and not knowing what to do. They run and hid. They didn't want to be associated with him. But then they was in the upper room too on the day of Pentecost. And now all of a sudden they're up there backing Peter. When the baptism, when the first message, when the first, when the first sermon is really preached after Jesus Christ had ascended back into heaven, this was the first sermon that was ever preached. And they was right there backing the apostle Peter. And then the Bible said, and I'm going to give you just a couple more verses. This one here, Acts chapter number four, verse number 33. And it said, with great power gave the apostles witnesses of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and great grace was upon them all. Great power gave the apostles. God gave them great power. And, and here's the thing. It wasn't just to them. When the Holy Ghost fell that day, it fell on all of them in the upper room. Do you know Mary, the mother of Jesus, was there? Do you know she received the baptism of the Holy Spirit? So if Mary, the mother of Jesus was there and, and wanted the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Shouldn't we want that? Shouldn't we want the power of God, the, the Spirit of the living God? Now, I'm going to tell you something today, and I want to... The last, the last video we did, I did an illustration toward the end of the video, and I want to do another one today, and, and I hope you're still watching. Please, because I'm going to give you an excellent example. God gave me this a long, long time ago. And I thought when I when he gave it to me, I thought, Lord, I see it so, so clearly. Okay. 
What is the baptism of the Holy Ghost? It's the it, we, yes, I know we've said it's when the the Spirit of God comes and dwells within you, but it's a baptism of fire, and the Bible said it's a baptism of power. We're not talking about getting out, and we're not talking about. Um, you know, jumping up and, and leaping tall buildings and stopping, um, stopping a, you know, a truck by putting out your hand. We're not talking about that. We're talking about power to fight the devil. Spiritually speaking, I'm talking about, we're talking about to try to, to win this battle that we've got. Do you know today you can be born again, but if you go out to the, if you're out focusing in the world today and living in the world today and someone says something about you hurtful to you, you know, sometimes what you want to do is you might, you might get upset and want to start a confrontation, but the baptism of the Holy Ghost will help you to stay calm. You might override it, but it will be there to help you. You know, it will be there to help direct you. You know, you can pray and you can get down on your knees and say, Lord, direct me throughout this day and God will be with you. And I'm sure God is with you if you're born again. But it's still, it's still not the experience. These men that we read about a while ago, they had, they had been following Jesus for three years, three and a half years. They had been followers of Christ for three and a half years. But do you see how the baptism of the Holy Ghost just gave them a confidence Gave them an emboldening to, to let people know about the Lord. Or even, you know, there's one scripture that says they, take, they uh, took note of them that they had been with Jesus. See, now when these people were running and hiding, there might not be anything there that would let someone think, well, now they've been with Jesus. But when the baptism of the Holy Ghost got on them, then the Bible said they had a, they had a, a, an outward expression. They had a glow about them. And here's another thing. The Bible tells us, and, it, and it's another reason why we need the Spirit, because the Bible tells us we are to have the fruits of the Spirit. Love, joy, meekness, peace, long-suffering, uh, uh, um, long-suffering and meekness. I think I said that. But we're to have the fruits of the Spirit. Okay? So if we got the fruits of the Spirit, we need the Spirit. Okay? Here's the thing that I want you to understand. And this is the illustration that the Lord gave me. If you're watching this video today, maybe you own your home. Maybe you, or you rent. I don't know if, if you, you know, uh, maybe you don't own your home. But, you know, maybe you've at one time looked at homes, looked at houses. Maybe you own your home. But let's say today you're out driving down the highway and you look over and you see this beautiful, beautiful beautiful home off to the side of the road. And there's a for sale sign out in that front yard. That road or that house is for sale. It can be yours. So beautiful. So what you do is you go and you attempt to purchase that house. You see the person that, that maybe has it for sale and you purchase the house. Sign the papers that house is yours. Now, that house belongs to you. Okay. It's yours. Well, you go to that house and you begin to open the doors and look inside. Of course, probably common nature, common knowledge. You're going to want to flip the switch. Oh, we've not got the electric turned on to the house yet. Well, that electric takes care of everything, doesn't it? There's no heat. There's no air. Your stove doesn't run. Uh, your hot water heater doesn't run. None of these things run that you need. You know, your microwave doesn't run. Coffee pot doesn't run. And your lights aren't on. You're sitting there in the dark. Now, the house is yours. You own that house. And you can proudly say, that house is mine. And you can sit there every day and eat beanie weenies out of a can and drink bottled water every day. You can put coats on when it's winter and, you know, fan, fan yourself when it's summer. You can do all this and try to stay warm and stay cool. 
Every day, you know, you can lay down at night, cover up big time during the winter. Get up, you can eat more beanie weenies, drink your bottle of water, and leave the house. Or, you can turn the power on to the house. You can go say, hey, this house is mine. I want the electric to it. You go get that electric signed over to you. Turn the electric onto the house. It's like the whole house lights up. The microwave works. The refrigerator works. The lights work. The light becomes illuminated all through the house. The air works. The heat works. Everything works. The coffee pot works. And now, you know what? You can sit down and you can cook you a good home-cooked meal. You don't have to just rely on the beanie weenies. Why? Because you've got the power. I hope and pray today that you're still watching this long enough. And if you've watched this long enough to understand or to get what I'm saying today, I wish you would just put amen in the comment section because this is a mighty, mighty, mighty illustration. You today might be a born-again child of God, and that is wonderful. And I'm thankful for it. God is, has done a work in your life. But to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, don't settle for just the beanie weenies. Don't settle for, hey, I own the house. Yes, you do. And the house is yours. I own this house. I'm just going to sit here and not worry about the electric. Jesus said, you'll receive power from on high. Turn on your spiritual electric and everything will start lighting up in you. And you say, well, how much better can I feel? Can I feel any better than, than what I do now? The more deeper you want to go with God, the more you're going to find God will let you go that deep with him. So if you don't have the experience that we've been talking about today, and I just read you a couple examples of, of the disciples and how they changed in just a short period of time from what they were just a few days before till after they'd been baptized with the Holy Ghost. They were still, they were, they were always, follow, they'd been followers of Christ for three years, but now all of a sudden, They've got a holy boldness about them. They're letting, their, they're letting their light shine. And I tell you what, when we go through the troubles of life, when we go through the times when sometimes that you feel like you'll, lay your, you'll pillow your head down at night and you won't know where you're going to, you know, you might not know where your next, uh, how you're going to get the money to pay your next bill or you won't know how in the world is this going to work out for me? What am I going to do on my job? What am I going to do? But the, the Spirit of God will come before you and will come within you. And he'll give you that peace that you can pillow your head and know, Lord, you're with me. Lord, you're with me. It's a wonderful, wonderful feeling. And I hope you got the, I hope you got the illustration. And I hope you use that illustration today about the house. Because I'm telling you today, you can own the house, a beautiful house, but unless you turn the power on, you're not going to get all the extra benefits of the house. And have being baptized in the Spirit of God, you're getting all the benefits that God's got for you. Remember how we said in the last video, you get in your big coat and putting your big coat around you. Well, it's just like, it's just like that. It's just like the, it's like another coat. It's like the electric. It's like power from on high because that's what it is. If you've got any questions on this, feel free to email us as we will put our email in the description box below. But remember today, God loves you and God wants you to get everything you can from him. We're going to do probably one more unless, unless someone asks more questions and we're probably going to want to do one more video on this series. And please hit the bell if you haven't because it should be probably Lord willing sometime next week. But I think you will be wanting to enjoy that one as we wrap it up. And it's not anything you're going to wrap up because basically, you know, this is something that's been going on since the day of Pentecost and we want it to keep going on. But this particular series 
I think you'll enjoy where you're going when we get to that last video. Because some people have asked, well, how do I receive it? We'll talk about that in the next video. Remember, God loves you. God bless you. And if you're new here, please subscribe. And we'll catch you on the next video.